Let's go. Where are we going? Don't don't Who knows? This. Who knows now? Don't be John Wall jumping on the scores table <laughs> with a game left in the series. Don't be T Mac saying it's nice to get out of the first series round. Series isn't over. Series isn't over. But there's no stressing how monumental of a win tonight was. And again, the Raptors have been calling every single game a game seven in this series, except for maybe game three. Felt a little that way tonight in that building. Donovan Bennett was down there. He'll give me a little bit of a, the scoop on the crowd because I got I got some questions about the building and the atmosphere around it. But whoo, feels good. Feels good to win, baby, baby. Uh, this is Raptors post game presented by Mastercard. Proud fan of basketball in the North. Let's start something priceless. Good evening, everybody. I'm JD Bunkus. He is Donovan Bennett in the nice jean jacket with the Raptors symbol on it. This is not a partisan show. We don't need to be that way. We're not journalists. We're not here to tell you the unbiased opinion. We are here to tell you the biased opinion of of two people who love watching basketball. So let's start with this. DeMar DeRozan was absolutely brilliant in this game. There were large stretches where he just put the team on his back offensively and really not much else outside of he and Kyle Lowry was working. Kyle Lauer was knocking down some threes, hitting some shots, getting other people involved, mostly DeMar. But outside of a few minutes from DeLon Wright in the early second quarter when the Raptors went with their all-bench look, nobody was providing the Raptors with a punch. Heading into the fourth quarter tonight, DeMar DeRozan had 32 points. And I looked at Papa and I said, okay, DeMar and Kyle are here. You should... You should clarify who Papa is. He's our producer. People are going to think you looked at your dad. I sometimes think when I look at my text messages from Papa that it is my dad because I do call my dad Pop. And I said, who is going to step up in the fourth quarter? Who is going to be the guy? This has been a whole series. The whole season has been built around this discussion that you and I have had, which is maybe the Raptors don't need Serge Ibaka to be their number three guy. Maybe the search for a number three guy is simply that The Raptors' depth is a number three guy. And on any given night, it can be any given player on this team. It wasn't number three tonight. Yeah, it certainly wasn't Serge Ibaka. But lo and behold, DeLon Wright, as the Raptors at one point in this quarter are down five points after a horrible N1 where Ty Lawson, the shortest guy on the floor, picks up an offensive rebound. It turns into a Kelly Oubre dunk, N1 foul. He goes to line, knocks it down, five-point lead, everybody's butt cheeks are clenching in the stadium and every Raptors fan watching it. And DeLon Wright comes in and starts stripping basketballs and grabbing rebounds and playing defense on John Wall and knock down a three-pointer that felt exactly like C.J. Miles' three-pointer earlier in the season when the world seemed like it was crumbling around the Toronto Raptors. And he, and I'll give shouts to Jonas Valanciunas too because he came in and really made an impact in the final few minutes as well. Not used to seeing that. But DeLon Wright specifically, once again, the X factor in this series as he fills in for Fred Van Vliet as this team's closer. And boy, oh boy, did that kid close with some big shots, big buckets, big force turnovers. And I thought just ultimately got into John Wall's head late in that game. You could argue the five most important points. I mean, they all matter, right? You add them up at the end. They're all valuable. But the the five points were... For sure, the building was the most tense. Were scored by the guy with two fives on his jersey. And this is the funny thing about playoff basketball, about basketball in general. Forget about from series to series. From night to night, the narratives change so wildly. Game one, we came in here and said, this could be the DeLon Wright series. We might not need Fred. Fred, Fred if, comes, if he comes back, we may not have any minutes for you, Fred. No vacancy, Fred, because DeLon Wright has a great matchup. Where was DeLon right in game three or four? Now game five, he was huge. Early in the series, we said, this could be the Jonas Valanciunas series. Mm-hmm. Jonas could dominate the glass. No, he didn't dominate the glass tonight. But big put back late, was a presence in the paint, played in the fourth quarter. People in the building were, were chanting for him to play in the fourth quarter, and, and he did. He was a factor. Earlier in the series, we said, well, well if Serge is going to continue to shoot the lights out like this, mm-hmm. The Serge could be that third guy. I get, this is back-to-back bad games for Serge. And it's not just the Raptors. DeLon Wright hits a 30-footer like he's Steph Curry, mm-hmm. not just wearing Steph Curry's shoes because he's an Under Armour guy. Bradley Beal has two wide-open threes. Mm-hmm. Like, 
pregame threes, bricks them both. And that's why it's tough to yin and yin and yang so much off of a result because we know just in two days, all of these narratives can change. And we could go from saying, well, JV can't play in the series. He's getting killed in the pick and roll to, man, well, we need JV because we can't grab a board. Uh, and, and I thought that, and it's the reason why, regardless of the losing two straight, we f- still felt that they're going to figure out a way to win two of the next three mm-hmm. because Dwayne Casey, in those times when, man, I'm not getting much from Surge, my, my bench isn't really scoring, he has more cards to play than, than the Washington coaching staff does. Just the fact that Ty Lawson, offensive rebound or not, was on the floor, that somehow he's stealing minutes from Sadaransky, and every Raptors fan is like, thank you. Somehow Lawson's hitting shots, but we'd rather see him than, than the guy that can guard with height. Shows you that there aren't a lot of options with Washington. And when, when, when Brad Beal's going to take over a game and add to what John Wall does, then, yeah, Washington at home with that crowd is going to be tough to beat. But is he going to be able to do that four nights in a row? I don't think so. So you're right. They do have more cards to play. One thing I, I really liked about DeLon Wright tonight was – he was more aggressive in hunting his shot. And there were moments where the Raptors' offense stagnated and he was trying to create off the dribble late in the clock, trying to go in there with his floater. And sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But I liked that he ended up getting his attempts. And I liked that he ended up going to the line. He was active and the Raptors were looking for him. In the, in the last game, in game four, DeLon Wright took seven field goal attempts and you and I lamented in the post game about how other people need to get involved because he was the, he was the next closest player with field goal attempts with seven of them after Colin DeMar DeRozan, like no one else was taking him. He was more assertive tonight. And that really paid off because if you look at game four, we criticized DeLon Wright for passing up two big three point shots yep. late in that ball game. He had a chance with clean looks to, 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 to shoot the basketball and he decided to defer and he's decided to dribble and try to look for other people. And it ended up in poor possessions tonight. What you had was DeLon Wright knocking down two massive threes. Again, the one in the fourth quarter, nothing was bigger than that one. Instead of being passive, DeLon Wright stepped up in the moment and, and nailed it. And again, it, it, you can't speak enough for a guy who, in this series, yes, there, it's possible that he would have still played a big role. You and I both thought he would be an X factor going into this series because of what he provides for you size-wise and defensively against John Wall and Bradley Beal. But I don't think we would have seen even quite this uh, to have two 18 point performances already in the series and to be, you know, the, the third man in for at least two of the games and stepping up for Fred Van Vliet, someone who was upgraded to questionable today and who everyone was hoping for would step in and who people were lamenting. Why is I wish DeLon Wright wasn't playing in game four. If that's Fred Van Vliet, he takes those three point shots, steps up in a huge moment, just a ton of poise for an ever developing young player who who has, again, sky's the limit for him. Let's let's pivot to JV because I'm really it was a really nice move by Dwayne Casey to put him back in that ball game. And you said the crowd was chanting his name. I didn't pick that up on the broadcast. Uh, the crowd. I mean, it, listen, it wasn't the entire crowd, but there were people sure. who were yearning for for some JV. And although he didn't necessarily shoot it well from the floor, he mm-hmm. he he did another double double. But I think thirteen boards a lot to to close possessions and that was that was if we're going to look at the negatives that was one of their issues was getting stops and having to get multiple stops i thought he was a beast on the glass especially because surge didn't really play as much as you might think he played you know 10 less minutes than jv Mm -hmm. because he didn't really have it tonight so i think that Dwayne casey went back to Jonas valanciunas for a couple of reasons one is that as he checked in, that was the moment, again, that I mentioned, like right around the nine-minute mark where Ty Lawson scoops that offensive rebound. And at that point in the game, offensive rebounds are now 12-3 to three for the Washington Wizards. And the offense had stagnated a little bit. It wasn't producing in the same way that it was earlier in the game. And guys aren't getting looks. JV stepped in, and the Wizards only had two offensive rebounds the rest of the ball game, unless they got one in garbage time that I didn't see. But they had two offensive rebounds and they didn't score on either of them. And I thought JV did a much better job of coming in and scooping a bunch of boards off the glass and making sure that there weren't as many second chance opportunities. So in that regard, one, he did well. Two, he played active defensively. He was trying to close out on shots and he was doing his best to help. He did a better job in the pick and roll actions than he had done in the game prior. 
but almost of equal importance, he was getting touches on the offensive end. And you're right, he did miss some shots, but they were really letting him, he and Gortat play down low. The two of them were very physical. A couple of those shots maybe you'd like him not to take, but ultimately he was really effective offensively. Kyle Lowry, he's opening things up in the pick and roll. He's opening up an outlet just at, at the bottom of the basket, and he's he's forcing the Wizards to to look at him and, and to foul him. And I just thought he helped really open up the offense too. It was uh, a really nice game from Jonas Valanciunas. And again, in, in, a, in a contest where you were really looking for who else was going to step up because, again, Serge Ibaka was minus five with three points. He missed his only three-point attempt. He missed. He went one or two from the line. He had two rebounds. He was a complete non-factor in this ball game. He was nowhere to be found. Jakob Pertl, despite scoring a couple of really nice baskets around the rim and providing them with some good defense, was not as effective as he was in game four. And Siakam. Pascal Siakam continues to really fight it in this series with only getting 12 minutes tonight. He was overlooked for Norm Powell at stretches <laughs> in the rotation. That's how, how bad you know it's gotten for Pascal Siakam. So when the Raptors desperately needed a front court presence late in that ball game, lo and behold, here comes Jonas Valanciunas, and they go on a 17-6 to run after being down five. And again, I cannot stress that it really did feel like the Raptors were going to blow this game. Not just when they were down five, but there were multiple opportunities where they pushed it back up, they went on a 6-0 run, and once they had that one-point lead, they kept getting these opportunities where they push it up to three and they'd have a possession. And you'd be saying, are you going to score here? Is this going to be it? Are you going to finally stretch this lead out a little bit? Are you going to let people just relax, give a little bit of breathing room? No, no, no. But the Raptors stayed solid defensively, forced a bunch of turnovers. Washington ended up catching the turnover bug that the Raptors did not have tonight. DeRozan had a few turnovers, but I think John Wall finished with seven turnovers in this game. Like, he was... He was getting. He got his pocket picked by Jonas Valanciunas. <laughs> like, that's how bad it got for John Wall in this game. That when he was trying to split the defense, JV was like, yep, cookies, I'll take that, Mr. Wall. Thank you very much. So the Raptors were the ones that ended up forcing them into 15 turnovers tonight. They finally win a turnover battle. The Raptors only with 10 of them, which by their standards is excellent in the postseason so far. A team averaging 17 coming into this game. But... Yeah, I can't believe we haven't talked about DeRozan and Lowry yet, but it really does feel like the, the story of the fourth quarter was as Shaquille O'Neal calls them and as you uh, like to call them, the others, because DeLon Wright and Jonas Valanciunas completely shifted this ball game late. Yeah, I, you mentioned JV's shot selection mm -hmm. as a minor issue you had with his overall night. I'm not as concerned because none of those misses of his, you know, he's got it up 13 times. None of those misses were threes. I mean, he was, he was still taking shots in the paint. And yeah, he shot 38.5% from the field tonight. Can I cut you off just for one second on that? He didn't shoot any threes. He is getting that respect at the three-point line, though, because, again, early in the ball game, he catches the ball outside, mm -hmm. pulls Gortat with the pump fake, and dribble drives it to the hole and gets a bucket. And mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, you're not even getting gapped by Gortat at the three-point line. He's just, like, doesn't want you to shoot that three. Sorry. He's going to be in the three-point competition next year. <laughs> um but, yeah, he shoots 38.5% from the floor tonight. In previous years, that would be enough cause for Dwayne Casey to say, okay, JV, you've had your time. Sit with me. You're not playing in the fourth quarter. But he's a guy in this series who has shot, coming into the game, 75% from the floor and didn't close games because of his issues defensively. Wall still got his numbers, 26. Gortat still got decent numbers, 10. But he wasn't hemorrhaging mm -mm. on the defensive end. And I think that allows you to continue to play him because he was such a beast on the boards. Full disclosure, I'm going to bring you behind the, the fifth wall, if you will. JD's not going to look at your tweets tonight. He normally no. says, you know, throw out the hashtag SN Raps. Yeah, use the hashtag SN Raps. You can tweet at me, at JD Bunkus. I'll see him later. Yeah, he'll see him about 2 a.m. Yeah, I you, will. You know, call us, 1-888-666. 0590. Swear to Star 590. God, if you call in and spoil this. Well, first of all, we have callers in delay, right? No? Well, they don't know what they're spoiling. Put them in yet. delay. So JD is going to watch the Leafs game in its entirety after this. He does not want to know what happened. He hasn't been paying attention. He's solely focused on the basketball game. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to take any of your tweets because he, he doesn't want to see hashtag belief to hear the good news or the bad news. So I, I will be funneling the tweets. Yes, you will. Uh, AJ tweets in, I really liked our fourth quarter lineup today. We've talked about closing lineups as long as we've talked. And we saw one tonight as we like to assess the closing lineup of JV. We mentioned that. Finished plus 19. DeMar, 
Started the game hot, scored seven right off the bat, 20 at the half, finishes with 32, even though he didn't score in the fourth. He was a plus 19, or plus 15. Kyle doing his, you know, a little bit of everything, 17 and 10, another double-double, plus 11. C.J. Miles. Let's talk about C.J. Miles. Hitting a big three late to ice it, plus 12. And then obviously double nickel DeLon Wright, plus 13. That's a group that I don't think either of us would have said was our preferred finishing five with the lead or down coming into the series, but they played well tonight. You felt what about the closing five? I liked the closing five tonight because, again, the ball for stretches in this game was let's wait for DeMar DeRozan or Kyle Lauer to do something or it's going to be nothing at all. And they tried multiple ways to to get C.J. Miles open, but kudos to John Wall because he played really solid defense on him. And I liked what C.J. Miles did in the fourth quarter. I really did. If you look at the three-point shooting, you're going to say, oh, well, isn't that supposed to be C.J. Miles' only thing? He was only two of, he was two of seven. That's a bad... Normally, the entire barometer for C.J. Miles is just look at one statistic. What did he do from three? Because we already know that he's not a great defender. We know that he can be a little complacent at times. And he's not supposed to offer you much else other than that one area of the game. He was brought in here to knock down open threes and, and stretch the floor and cause openings for Lowry and DeRozan and others and to make sure that he was respected out there. This game, in the fourth, it wasn't just C.J. Miles' three-point shooting. He got out, he had, a, he had a block, he got a couple assists, he played a really nice pick-and-roll game with, with Jakob Pertl, found him around the basket early, again, before the substitutions were made, and, and no one really had it. I thought he dug in on defense. He grabbed four rebounds tonight. Yep. He, was, he was a lot more active on the glass. Again, that's twice as many as the Raptors starting power forward tonight. <laughs> and I know that he did it in... He did, he did it actually in the almost the exact same amount of minutes. We played if one CJ more Miles, minute. Yeah, if CJ Miles is playing one more minute than you, he shouldn't have two more rebounds than you, Serge Ibaka. And a lot of those rebounds were, were long rebounds. Mm-hmm. Long, long shots from Washington. Long threes, long misses. Uh, 50-50 balls. He got to loose balls, and that's that's not something you expect to be part of the C.J. Right. Miles experience. Right. I thought that C.J. just did a really good job at injecting himself in other ways. And even when they were playing him so high, they they did that little fake handoff where he he gets the rim screen and he runs right to the basket and, and hits a wide-open layup. He was he was confident in attacking the basket. Again, even got to the free throw line. Yeah, I thought, I thought C.J. Miles did incredibly well tonight. And he, DeLon Wright, Jonas Valanciunas, as as much as you want to look at Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan for the overall body of work tonight, and and Lowry had some some really really big steals, like some really big steals. Uh, they the the turnovers and the steals also really helped propel the Raptors into this win because every time Washington would try to set up in their offense, it just felt like another Raptor was there picking somebody's pocket. Whether it was Lowry grabbing one from Porter or John Wall getting stripped by DeLon Wright or. De, or John Wall getting stripped by Jonas Valanciunas trying to b- blow by DeLon Wright. Like, the Raptors just did an incredible job in that quarter playing defense and having those other guys step up. Yeah, that's a great point. De- DeMar had four. I mean, part of that is the ball was his in his hands a lot. I th- still think he was a bit loose with it at times. But no yeah. other Raptor had more than two. Kyle had one after he really struggled taking care of the ball in, in game four. And I think you put it into perspective. He had one turnover. Get 10 assists. Mm-hmm. When your starting point guard has a 10 to 1 sister turnover ratio, you're going to win your share, share games. Before we move on, the thing I liked about that closing lineup, and you, you, you alluded to it, but you didn't go all the way in there and say it. They were shot ready. Mm-hmm. Didn't mean they t- necessarily took all the shots, but they were shot ready. JV took 13. CJ Miles only took seven, but he wasn't turning them down. If, if he was closed out, he, he moved the ball. Uh, DeLon had 10, which is not a huge amount, but for, for him it is, and especially when he was deer uh, in headlights in, in game four. The fact that when DeMar moved the ball in the fourth quarter, when Kyle moved the ball, those guys were looking and willing participants. They weren't carried around like luggage. They were saying, man, if I have to take a big shot in a big moment, I will. Miles did it and knocked down a big three. DeLon Wright did it and knocked down a big three, and I think that was the difference as far as bringing this game home past the finish line had a lead in Washington game four couldn't finish it because no one else wanted to take a shot. DeMar was forced to take all of them tonight. It was a different story. Those guys were willing and active participants in the winning. So tonight the focus, I think moving forward in terms of what are you going to try to clean up? 
is the rebounding because he got out rebounded 35 to 50 in this ball game and the offensive rebounds were especially a problem 14 of them to your six not a not a great look but one a couple of things that i think the raptors really need to take on them on the road with them are three-point shooting of which they only shot 18 threes in the last game against washington but they finished with 26 assists 10 turnovers, so cutting down on those turnovers, and still finished 11 of 25 from the three-point line for 44% compared to Washington shooting 5 of 26 for 19% from the three-point line and the 15 turnovers. It's, it's going to be critical for the Raptors to continue to move forward that the pieces around Lowry and DeRozan, and I guess a lot of this still does fall on Lowry in terms of making his three-point shots. I don't know how DeMar is looking a lot more confident from, from deep, and he has hit some just massive threes. He's 3 of 4 again tonight, but... Though the the players on the Raptors making sure that they can translate that that three point shooting that ball movement and that and that care with the basketball onto the road, um, let's let's hit Demar, because early in this ball game, one of my keys that I was really looking for making sure was Demar Derozan shot the ball too much. He had a Russell Westbrook game in Game Four. It hurt them late in the ball game, and I think it it not only hurt that he was taking some bad shots, but it also hurt that. He did not get his teammates involved, and no one else felt confidence, like I mentioned, DeLon Wright, uh, to take a shot late. Nobody else was involved, and C.J. Miles ends up breaking that three. And again, it's hard to blame DeMar for all of these things, but I, I do think that there is something to be said about when your teammates are involved and they're touching the ball a lot, that they feel more confident to, to, to shoot it and to hit it. Early in this game, DeMar DeRozan came out and just established himself from from the first quarter through the third and was basically an unstoppable force. His, his start was perfect. Came out, got a bucket with an easy step through. Then he makes a calm play on the block, waits patiently for Lowry. Lowry makes a cut. He finds him with the ball. Then he fights through contact, beats, goes over, Gortat scores, knocks down a catch and shoot three, draws a foul on John Wall, draws a foul on John Porter, or John Porter, on Otto Porter, drives to the cup, gets an easy layup, and... Before the, the starters came out, because the, when it went to me, DeMar on the bench, it didn't really end up working out. But up until that point, like he was just, he was brilliant. And all through this game, all my notes are full of is different, amazing things that DeMar DeRozan was doing. I thought he actually mixed, fin- like not finally, but that he did a great job of doing the assertive DeMar DeRozan that looked for his matchups, didn't hesitate from shooting the basketball when he had advantageous ones, getting to the basket, shooting threes when they left them wide open and, and had really good decision-making because he, he didn't take really a ton of bad shots tonight. Missed a couple that were all within DeMar DeRozan range. Like, I can't think of more than one shot that DeMar DeRozan took tonight that I really didn't like. And the turnovers he had, the four turnovers he had, were a result of, again, him probably having the ball a little bit too much and other people not stepping up and helping him. So I, I just thought he was brilliant. I, I thought that DeMar had that perfect balance of attacking the basket, getting to his spots, scoring, but then also making sure that his teammates got involved or at least tried to give them some opportunities to to do so. I thought it was a, it was a aggressive, but measured aggressiveness. And Mm -hmm. we knew he was going to respond after he struggled to close game four and and he had the brunt of the criticism. But I, I actually heard a quote from Giannis in the Bucks' last game to the Celtics, which was a loss. Giannis only took 17 shots in the game. And I thought it was pretty profound, but also it applies to DeMar. And I'm interested to, to get your thoughts on it. Giannis said, I had a lot of shots. I had a lot of clean looks, but they weren't my looks. And I thought it's interesting because it's difference between having a clean look, having a shot, but having the shot that you're comfortable with, mm-hmm. that you want to take. That where you're from your spots, where you've practiced. And the difference in the end of that game was DeMar had some looks. They were okay. He took a lot of shots, but they weren't his shots. And he's a tough shot taker and maker. I get it. But he wasn't necessarily comfortable. He was shooting because he felt like he had to shoot in that moment. John Wall, on the other hand, throughout the entire series, he's taking shots he's really comfortable with. He's yeah. always under control. Getting to all his spots. I thought tonight DeMar took just as many shots, was just as aggressive, and, you know, people could criticize about the hero ball and the iso ball. I mean, that's a real thing. The Rockets put up 50 points in a quarter off iso ball. Mm -hmm. I think if you're getting to your spots, that shot 
in the hands of your best player is a good shot. Tonight, I thought the shots early, even though he was aggressive and the offense was all him, they were good shots because they were his shots. Does that make sense? Yo, it does. Uh, I would say that the only difference between him and and, uh, the Greek freak is that DeMar DeRozan still has more shot-making ability in his repertoire. Like, there's more shots that I feel like DeMar DeRozan can take and make from different areas of the floor. Even when De- DeMar is doing the he, – he had one where he, he didn't make it on Bradley Beal late in the fourth quarter mm-hmm. where he got him on the block and he was trying to create for himself and he was trying to be aggressive. And Beal played excellent defense and slowed him down. I, I still looked at that and said, all right, that's, that's a fine attempt for you. Like, that's, that's okay. And DeMar DeRozan shooting 50% from the field. Like, and, again, if you're going to have three or four from, from deep, that's, that's gravy. I didn't, I didn't look at DeMar DeRozan's shot selection tonight and, and think it was all that bad. Again, even some of the turnovers he had, I, I thought it was because teammates weren't moving. And it's, it's him trying to do everything. And guys are kind of standing around and ball watching him do stuff. And then he, he gets trapped by a couple by, by the defense and ends up losing the ball. So I, I really don't have anything to criticize about DeRozan's game, especially got, when he's got five assists with that. I got some tweets for you. Sonny K, great gamble tonight taken by Casey, putting Jonas in the game in the fourth, yep. cleaned up the boards, hustled on D, offensive rebounds, steals. I, I think you would concur with, with all that? I would. Uh, our guy still has perfect attendance, Brennan Delaney. Officiating was awful tonight, quite frankly. Don't care if Toronto won. That kind of officiating needs to get out. Guess who one of the rest was? Question mark. Mark Davis. Also, why did it take JV so long to play in the fourth? He wanted more JV. The controversial loss against the Thunder, where a bunch of guys got thrown out earlier in the year, if you're not sure about the reference, was officiated by one Mark Davis. Again tonight, the official was Mark Davis. I mean, we have a reputation as Raptors fans as complaining about what was us? American media and league office and refs hate us. I mean, Kelly Obrey Jr., and we've seen some tweets about the issue that he's getting star calls and he's not a star. Did you mm-hmm. have an issue with the officiating tonight? No. Nah. There was one in the second quarter, I think, where Kyle Lowry got bulldozed uh, by Otto Porter, where Otto Porter just stuck the arm out and fell on top of him, and Lowry ended up getting a blocking call. But outside of that, I can't remember another call where I looked at that and felt like it was an egregious miss. I, I, I don't. I, I think people put too much stake into the officiating of these ball games. I know it gets frustrating, and you you want guys like Demar Derozan, especially who and Kyle Lowry, who are who are attempting to get to the basket and to finish there. But nah, I I really thought the officiating tonight was balanced and and pretty fair. I I, I did. I before I turned my phone off. I saw a few people tweeting in at me about, are these refs serious? Is this real? Like, is what's wrong with that NBA official? And But I, I just, I didn't feel that way. Like, I didn't, I didn't look at it. To me, the, the concerns from this game, if we're going to go with, like, things that actually bothered me, one was I just, I thought Serge Ibaka played with no energy. And to be coming off of three days rest, I expected rested Serge to show up. And I thought a big reason why they dominated on the glass was because he didn't show any effort with defensive rebounding, like he was in, he was nowhere to be found. He didn't shoot the ball particularly well. And I didn't even think that he was like doing really anything on offense. Like what did Serge do? Like, do you remember Serge plays? No. At all? Um, He had a, he had a sloppy turnover again tonight and no blocks, 23 minutes. Like it, you'd have a hard time to go through a box score and, and have it be just about as accurate as Serge Ibaka's play was tonight, where you just look across the board and he was just a complete non-factor tonight. They're going to need more from Serge. And OG Ananobi, if you look through his, see, this is what I'm talking about in terms of differences in box scores. OG, same thing, only three points, ends up a minus three, had a couple of turnovers, and was only one of four from deep on his on his three-point attempts. Had Should have had, that was actually a bit of a weird call too. I guess he did get his knee into to Gortat's junk. Uh, to me, that just kind of looks like a guy going up, and it's a little unfortunate incidental contact, but I think that's a non-call. So it should have been five points for OG. But OG's defense, once again in this game, was brilliant. Thought he did. I thought it made a. It was a really nice to have him on John Wall early and trying to take John Wall a little bit out of his rhythm. And I didn't think. I don't think John Wall or Bradley Beal look as comfortable when OG and Anobi's on them. He's just. He's done a really good job, and he had a. He had a really nice steal early. A couple of like not so great turnovers, but. But he was active. He had he had a good block early on in that game. 
And I, I actually thought that this was going to be a game where he closed, but you ended up getting quite a bit from C.J. Miles, and so it was tough to take C.J. out. But it wasn't because of anything O.G. Ananobi was doing. And even the three he hit in the third, after going 0 for 3, guy sticks with it and, and knocks and knocks one, and down a big shot. So, again, another, another solid game from the rookie tonight. Big night in sports tonight. Yeah. I've got a little breaking news for you. Don't. A little breaking news. I know this is something TFC-related. J.D. Bunkus, I know you care. I'll have you know that late at the end of the game to win it, LeBron James hit a three to win. Mm. And the Cavaliers won by three. His only three-pointer of the night Gross. gives him 44 points, 10 rebounds, eight assists in 41 minutes. The Cleveland Cavaliers take a 3-2 series lead over the Pacers. Yuck. Uh, to be honest with you, though, I... I can't even have give it any emotional equity because I just had so much on the line tonight with the Leafs, and you were then I was real really sweating the, the Raptors. I, I did, you, man. You were real I, scared I was going to give you a little Leaf update. I wasn't scared it was going to be Leafs. I know you wouldn't do me like that. Wow. I, I know we're, we're like, I know. You, listen, I know that I can annoy you at times. I know I can bother you at times, but I know that you're not gonna you're not gonna kill me with the Leafs, especially when I've tried so hard. Oh, and plus, this is all videotaped. I guess people would have footage of you dying, and so that would be good. Like, oh, it would be please. open and shut, oh, but it would be you definitely dying on camera as I, I murder you in cold blood for ruining this game for me. Man, I, I can't believe I've made it this far. What's that? Yeah, what? exactly. Hey, Kadri, test, did, Kadri, test, did, Kadri did what? Test your fate. Like, let's see. Let's wow. see. Test your fate. Uh, a couple things. Marshawn, that, really? Marshawn? Yeah, uh, wow. a couple, a couple wow. things from the Warriors side, as if or the Wizards side. In a See, game I'm all seven, flustered now. As if that happened. I'm all flustered now. But a couple things from the Wizards side. It was lucky that they didn't really get a ton from their power forwards because I thought that it was a night where you could get opportunistic. CJ, or sorry, Pascal Siakam and Serge Ibaka. Neither guy ended up giving you much, and so the Raptors ended up going small for some stretches. And I think that has again a lot to do with the, the defensive rebounding. Is that Casey hasn't wasn't able to find a power forward that was really going to give him anything in this game. Like there was just no, they, like you weren't getting anything. And even though Pascal, I thought, found himself a little bit in game four because he was doing some pretty good defensive work against John Wall, the the possessions he got against Wall in that game, Wall was just blowing by him. He had he had absolutely no problem. He made the adjustment. He figured out what what Pascal was doing pretty quickly. Um, but the the Wizards, I didn't think that they were able to get like Markeith Morris, two of six, o of two for three, and. Mike Scott, who checked in early and, and did some damage, and is up with three of five, but only 14 minutes, strangely. I, I'm not really sure why Scott Brooks decided to, to pull that lever away. Maybe it was because Kelly Oubre Jr. Was, was doing things, but even Oubre Jr., like, he's one of seven from three. He missed a ton of, of good looks in this ballgame, and I actually thought he took some really bad shots. So when you look at this, how much credit are you giving the Raptors for their defense tonight? And how much are you giving, are you just taking it away because Washington was just so dreadful from deep? And, but they, again, 41% and 19% from three. There was a stretch in the second quarter where, or was it the third? I think it was the second. Yeah, it was the second quarter where the Raptors went almost seven minutes without a field goal and they finished the quarter shooting, uh, or the half shooting only 37%. But the Raptors only had a one-point lead, which was, which again was tough to swallow. Which was kept leading me to believe that the Raps were going to blow that one. But what did you make of the Raps' defense tonight? I thought the defense was was good. It wasn't as consistent as we're used to in the regular season. But Washington, a very good offensive team, especially in the half court. Listen, Wall and Beal combined for forty-six. That's, I mean, it's it's not great, but it's not terrible. It's not fifty-six. It's not sixty-six, which could happen. And if you told Dwayne Casey pregame, you're going to keep Wall and Beal to 46. I think he'd take that. Why? Because I don't think he thinks that the rest of the Wizards, and they don't go that deep, so the other five guys that are going to play mm -hmm. are going to be able to score 80 points on their own. Mm -hmm. Right? You leave them in an open gym. How, many, how, how long would it take them to put the basket, the ball in the basket 40 times to get them 80 points? And so as long as those guys aren't going off for 55, 60 points, killing you, and also bringing the others along at the same time, I think you'll, I think you'll live with that. And, and so I, I do think that even though it wasn't pretty at times, the fact that, and let's be honest, Bradley Beal's 20 points was a quiet 20. He was, he was 20 points, but he was a team worse minus 14. 
Bradley Beal, even some of his shots that he hit were ridiculous step backs. I'm more confident in Bradley Beal hitting a shot right now in the series when he has that step back late in the clock with a hand in his face than I am when he's getting a clean look right now. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. He's been good. Um, or he's been good at doing that. Um, JD, I don't know. I know you don't want to hear this, but uh, I have some breaking news for you. <laughs> this is cruel. I've got some breaking news for you. Let's do it. What's your What's your first name again? Giannis David. Giannis David. Giannis David. You should You should have more love for Jonas if you're Giannis David. I do have love for Jonas. JD, some big news. Hawks head coach Mike Buttonholzer has mutually agreed to part ways with the Atlanta Hawks. That was never a surprise. He wants to win. And the Hawks don't look anywhere close to that. I think that they're ready to keep tanking. So what did he go? He's going to go to the Suns. Is that what? Well, he for? already kind of said no to the Suns. So I'm not really sure. So maybe it's else. awkward when you let your coach go talk to other people while yeah. he's still your coach. Yeah. So what do we make of of what's happening with Serge Ibaka right now? Because again, he was so good through the first like the the first game of the series. He stepped up. He's he looks great. And then tonight, just like again, nowhere to be found. I'm not going to write him off because this series has been so weird and he is obviously a very capable player. He could show up in game six and end up being, you know, the Raptors best guy and it couldn't be, it shouldn't be that shocking, but the rest clearly doesn't end up getting him going. And I wonder if it's a situation where the Raptors need to find a way to get him involved in the offense early that Serge Ibaka needs to take some shots. They need to be looking for him to shoot some threes early with his feet set, of course, uh, but trying to get him involved because I do find that when Serge isn't involved early and he's not getting clean looks and he's not getting the shots that you like, he starts to insert himself in ways that you really don't enjoy. That's when he starts to try to make a little bit too much happen with the dribble. It's when he starts to try to take that floater. That's when he starts to take fouls. He wasn't moving very well on defense either. Like guys were blowing by him tonight. He he wasn't able to really stay on, in front of defenders. And normally I think that it all starts, he can just pick himself up by engaging on defense and he doesn't need the offense. But I think more and more we're learning that Serge Ibaka still likes his touches. He still likes to get his looks. Yeah, he only got three shots in the game, one right. for three. So it's, it's hard to be upset with the fact that he didn't shoot a good percentage because he didn't shoot many shots. Right. And now it's in 22 minutes. And again, to start this series, he was a guy who was looking for his shot. He was super aggressive. He was shot ready. At that spot, him and Morris went at it a bit. Morris didn't play necessarily well, or at least from the field. Finishes with only six points on 25% shooting, but he had nine rebounds. He, he, he impacted the game in other ways, and that's not a matchup, again, that you think Serge is going to lose and lose handily, especially when both guys aren't scoring because Morris, at, at this point of his career, is, is a stretch guy. The, the interesting thing with Serge, and no, I'm not going to write him off because as soon as you write someone off in this series, they play well the next game. The interesting thing with the surge dilemma is, it, okay, if you're not playing him, who are you playing? Jakob Pertl was a team worst minus nine in 15 minutes. Siakam has struggled for all the same reasons that Surge has. And, and actually, what concerns me about Siakam is, I mean, he's going to miss some shots fine. What, what do we think about when we think about him? What are the signature plays? Why was he effective at times in game four when he's out leading the break, running, dunking, you know, running things down and, and making blocks in, in, in transition defensively. He, he, his real talent is the fact that he's a gazelle. Yeah. And we haven't seen that from him. And, and mind you, playoffs, the, the pace slows down a little bit. Uh, but we haven't seen that. And, and so if you're not playing Surge, I'm not really sure who else you're looking to. And I'm interested to hear what our next guest, Eric Smith, would would say about that situation. So yeah, radio voice of the Raptors, Eric Smith joins us now, TV sideline reporter for Sportsnet. Hey Eric, how's it going, man? Good, guys. Hey, so uh, this is kind of a weird way to bring you in considering what happened with this ball game, but Serge Ibaka, not super effective tonight. You know, d- finishes up with the two rebounds. He's a minus five. He only takes three shots. I'm wondering if you think that the Raptors maybe need to do a bit of a better job at, at trying to get him going early in ball games with his offense and letting him feel the ball a little bit more and trying to drop some plays where he takes shots. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to that because there's no denying. I, I think I even kind of tweeted out earlier that you, you need somebody else to be making shots. Uh, DeMar DeRozan was clearly effective tonight, especially in the early going. Kyle Lowry seemed to be kind of getting his as well. Uh, but that was the issue to me as this game was going on until the fourth quarter. Hit. Who else was stepping up? Who else was making shots and doing anything for this team? Uh, and that was the, the, the major issue, I thought, 
uh, was that you had more shot makers on the other side. And, and even if it's just a bucket here and there, two or three buckets here and there, that's the difference when you look down. And, you know, I heard you guys talking about some of the struggles from, from Pirtle, uh, from Siakam, from Norm Powell, who saw some minutes tonight. Nobody else, uh, OG surge, nobody making shots. And, and, and there wasn't enough balance to the offense overall. And I don't think it was a product of DeRozan forcing stuff. I think it was a product of DeRozan getting his because nobody else was getting theirs. Uh, so, so if, if to your point, JD, maybe getting in the surge involved a little more, a little bit more, excuse me, drawing stuff up for him. But at the same time, I think you kind of go within the flow of your offense too. And yeah. if, if the Rosen is seeing the, the, the spots and the ball's going through him and in the hands of the Rosen in the hands of Larry, then, you know, it's kind of pick your poison. I think to some extent, and, and I'd be, I guess I'd be somewhat cautious or, or somewhat hesitant about totally trying to switch things up going into a game six with the lead and suddenly you're, you're, you're changing who you are or what you've been over the course of the season just to get a guy going. As, as important as it is, I'm acknowledging that. I just, mm-hmm. I'd just i be a little bit weary of kind of going too far off the beaten path at this point in the series, especially when you're not down. Yeah, no, I, it's a great point. And, and we were we were discussing how brilliant DeMar DeRozan was early in this ballgame when he was playing with the starters. Like he just, he took over for large stretches. And I, I wonder, when you watch him play, what do you think the difference is between DeRozan when you, you see a fourth quarter like you did last or in the last game, game four, where he is getting criticized for for taking too many shots and not getting other teammates involved, and a game like tonight where I thought he just he found that really good uh, that really good balance between his scoring and trying to get others involved. But yeah, he like he was just dominant. He was he was just able to get to all his spots. And I wonder what you think it is for him when it goes from being that that little bit too much DeRozan. Versus someone who still, you know, took 24 shots tonight, but was great to Rosen. Yeah, you know, part of it I will say, and 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 it's a very minor part I think in the in the grand scheme. Uh, I look back to last game and how many of those shots, if they go down, end up making him look better because it wasn't then 10 of 29. I mean, tonight he only only quote unquote makes two more field goals on what five less attempts or or six less attempts. Um, but there's there's no denying that what we saw was a guy that seemed to be forcing it more, but in part of forcing the other night as well. You saw him going to the free throw line, whereas tonight he wasn't getting to the line as much because he was making more of a shot. So there's kind of the, a little bit of the yin and the yang or a chicken and the egg type uh, thing with, with DeRozan, I think, in the two games. But what I felt was just the way that he was spacing the floor a little bit more, the decision-making that he was uh, showing, especially early on in the game. Uh, I think that's maybe what was more impressive is just decisions that he made and they were smarter decisions in key moments, whether it was attack, whether it was pull up, whether it was move the ball. And I thought he seemed to be, now listen, he's never going to be a lockdown guy, but he seemed to be a little bit more active and involved even on the defensive end and out in the open court and stuff as well. So there just was, there was more energy to his game on both ends, I thought. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I think that we saw him revert a couple of times in the fourth quarter uh, into kind of ISO and forcing a couple of things up, but he quickly got off that and started mm-hmm. moving the ball around. And we saw, obviously, Valanciunas involved and DeLon Wright stepping up huge when he had to. Somebody needed to, and DeLon did. And, uh, you know, I, I think DeMar was a product of that as well and a major key in that in terms of just kind of getting things moving for the team. We're getting a lot of tweets, and continue to tweet us, hashtag SN Raps, about how much people loved that fourth quarter lineup that closed the game. That's good because you haven't seen it before. Uh, Joseph Casario, friend of the show, mentioned it in the postgame presser. You tweeted it out. That lineup that closed the game had played five minutes together for the entire season. You, you've seen all of the lineups from preseason to regular season to mm-hmm. postseason. Did that group surprise you at all? And why do you think we saw them in such a big spot? Uh, I think it probably goes to, to, to Donovan what you were asking off the top or what we were all talking about off the top in terms of the overall ineffectiveness of uh, – of Serge Ibaka. So I think Dwayne Casey was recognizing and realizing we need to find more offense on the floor. I'm going to wrap it up here in a second as John Wall and Bradley Beal just walked by yep. me and are heading to the uh, press conference. Uh, but I think it was a case of the Raptors need some offense on the floor, but they need to find somebody that's going to, to be able to play off the ball, off Lowry, off the Rosen. And if you can finally somehow find a way to ignite CJ Miles, can you get him to, to throw a body down low and to, to keep a body on somebody and give you a little bit, even a fraction of what Serge Ibaka was trying to and ineffectively doing? And can you get somebody on the floor that can mimic the minutes and the production of a Fred Van Vliet like DeLon Wright did early in the series, and then he was able to do so tonight. So I think that was, you know, you don't want to say that you're just throwing it against the wall and hoping that it sticks, but I think part of it was Dwayne Casey and staff saying, all right, we got to play the numbers here. We need some scoring. We're not scoring a lot right now. What's the lineup that we could get away with? And I think there was a lot of uh, outcry for trying to get Valanciunas on the floor. And to his credit, he responded in a big-time way as yeah. well. I mean, that's a guy we haven't talked a lot about. And he played, you know, arguably his his best fourth quarter. I don't know if it's all season, but certainly in a long, long time. Yeah, he was awesome. Hey, man, thanks for squeezing us in tonight. Uh, we really okay. appreciate it. 
Cheers, Eric. Thanks, guys. Eric Smith, radio voice of the Raptors, sidelines with Sportsnet. Yeah, I, again, I don't think we... I I have been very critical of Jonas Valanciunas at times, and I, I try to do it as fairly as possible. Um, I I thought that in the, the game four, he was a big reason as to when Washington's de- or offense started to get going. You've seen it in this series. If the Raptors take care of the ball and they just force John Wall to try to do things, he has a really tough time, and he has had an easier time when Jonas Valanciunas has been on the floor. JV played with really good energy tonight, and I thought he played really well defensively, as good as Jonas Valanciunas can play defensively in that fourth quarter, which is a really positive sign. And I think it's tough. I think it's tough for big men who are exerting so much energy and carrying so much weight around to play that well for for long stretches of time. And JV getting a bunch of rest and coming in in that spot, a, a spot where he was asked to rise to the occasion. He's done it before. He's been a really good playoff performer for this Raptors team before. He's he's proven that he's can be very effective in the postseason. So, uh, yeah, big big switch for Jonas Valanciunas. Big minutes from CJ Miles, and and of course Delon Wright. It's funny because in my notes leading into the game, I, I had a couple of keys. One was CJ Miles' home three point shooting versus his road three point shooting. At home, he was eight of thirteen heading into tonight. One of eight on the road. Finishes two of seven from tonight. But I think we both agree that CJ Miles was still largely effective, and the Raptors just drilled three pointers from everywhere, and they got contributions from everyone. Ended up with forty four percent three point shooting. So home three point shooting ends up working out in their favor. Take care of the basketball. You cut down on your turnovers from averaging seventeen a game. You cut them down to seven, and you ended up being the team that was forcing a lot of mistakes from from the Wizards, especially late. Again, if I was going over keys of the fourth quarter, one of them would absolutely be the Raptors' active hands on defense, stripping basketballs and getting into lanes and, and forcing tough offense from the Wizards. But my other one was DeMar DeRozan playing controlled but still aggressive. And again, he was brilliant tonight. Carried them on his back for three quarters. There really wasn't much going on outside of he and Kyle Lowry, who is probably getting the, the least amount of respect in this game for what was a really beautiful box of 17 points, 10 assists, three steals. Awesome tonight for, from Kyle. And then lastly, it was try to make them pick their poison a little bit more between Wall and Beal. Don't let the two of them go off and be a late at 20 and wasn't getting in his rhythm and didn't look nearly as good as he did at home. So just the Raptors checked all the boxes tonight, man. Like that's how you get a, that's how you get a big win in a big game and depth comes through, your stars come through, you, you take care of the basketball, you shoot the three ball and, and you move it and you, you finish with 26 assists. Like, there were moments of real terror in this basketball game, but ultimately that fourth quarter, like that's about as good as it gets for the Raptors. That, that again, same after game one, that felt like a lot of the cultural reset, a lot of the things that were discussed when, when they failed, when they flamed out last year and, and what they needed to change. And, and you saw it again tonight. Yeah. I think you had Beal and wall who combined for 46 tomorrow and Kyle combined for 49. And, yeah. and so that's pretty better. much a wash. They got outplayed in the two losses they played each other even tonight. The difference in why the Raptors end up winning by 10 is to go along with those guys, you have Delon Wright, who gets you 18. Jonas Valanciunas gets you 14. You have those other guys, those secondary guys, to step up and give you a little bit of assistance offensively. But it's an, still an incredibly tight series. If my math is correct, the, the cumulative score, you know, almost the aggregate if this was soccer. Well, you're going to do cumulative score off your top of your head, or did you use the calculator? No, off the top of my head. I think the Raptors are plus right. two. Can you tell me if I'm right you or wrong? you got to fact check that. I'm, I'm sure. I mean, not that facts matter. Um, I don't want to put out any fake news. Yeah, it's a tight but, series. But it's, there... it's a close series. DeMar Rosen at the podium says, and I quote, I hope you don't have to come back here after tonight's game five win. Is there any doubt in your mind that we are going to be doing a show on the weekend Close the series, not start a new one. It wouldn't be a Raptors first round series without Game Seven, baby. Yeah, it's one versus <laughs> eight. You can throw that all out the window. Yes, yeah, actually, you know what? It actually reminds me a little bit in some regards to the Pacers series from a couple of years ago, where the Raptors at home took care of business, and then they went on the road and they got stomped out, and they were more competitive uh, in Game Four, anyways, than than they were, I think, in that Raptors Pacers series, but. Yeah, just where it does end up being really tight and you've got some good players and the other team probably still has the the best player in John Wall. And at the time, they had the best player in Paul George. So, yeah, I could very well see it coming back for Game 7. But the the key is always just to never drop one at home if you're Toronto. You're an excellent home team. Things work out for you in that building. What was the atmosphere like, by the way? Because for, from, 
from watching it on TV, it, it really did feel as though that the crowd was very tense and it was very quiet in the buildings at times. Uh, the producer, Papa, not your actual Papa. Okay. I'm still not over the fact that you just said Papa cavalierly as if, as if everyone We've was done a few of these shows. People should know who Papa but, is. But uh, we're growing. We've got new listeners, unique yeah, yeah. listeners, sorry, if sorry. you My will, to, to help our friends at, at MasterCard with new listeners. Uh, and our new listeners are priceless. And, and, and the new listeners actually heard you say Papa, and they just envisioned you, because you said, I looked at Papa. And, and they just envisioned you sitting on, like, your dad's <laughs> lap, like, looking up to him, talking about the game. Anyways, yeah. uh, I was correct. The, the okay. Raptors are up plus two Good on math. this series. Thank you. Good math. It's a uh, Western education for you. Nice. And by that, you mean the university, not like you going and getting out west? A, a, no. an education out west. No. The so, university. Yeah. It's been a really tight series. There were a lot of things that went the Raptors' way tonight. I thought that they deserved to win. As much as the offense didn't look great at times, and as when we had Eric Smith on, he, he, he did make the point. And it was really, that's why it was a stroke of genius by Dwayne Casey to go to JV when he did go to JV because they needed something new on offense, and that was the bigger problem. It wasn't the defense. The defense played pretty great all night. But if you just look at it in a whole as to, okay, who played better defense tonight? Raptors. Who rebounded the basketball better? Washington. No question. Who stars played better? Toronto's. Tonight, Toronto stars outplayed theirs. Who shot the ball better? Toronto. They, they killed them from the three-point line. It wasn't even close. Who took care of the basketball better? Toronto. Like, if you just go through, who moved the ball better? Toronto finished with 26 assists to Washington's 21. And I just thought, again, got people involved. So I, I just went through this game, and I was thinking to myself, how, how could Toronto lose when they've done so well and they've just outplayed them and they just had unfortunate stretches where they they couldn't create separation and you really thought it was going to bite them in the ass because how many times in this game was it just a one-point game one for the raptors ago. like out of their leads i wonder what the percentage of the game was where the the raptors held a one-point lead like it was long it was a long ass time felt like the entire first half it, the lead was one or two and you, you asked me about the the mood in the building it was tense it was super tense and i mean i think the loudest cheer i heard until late in the third quarter when people started to believe maybe they could win this was, you know, after the national anthem when the players kind of had the Toronto Strong mm -hmm. banners. Both both players on both teams, which I thought was super classy. Um, but the, the, the mood was, was tense in the building. People were just kind of waiting for a reason to cheer and, and really wanted an extended lead to, to have some fun and to party. But a lot of people biting nails and a lot of people biting the the free t-shirts that they got mm -hmm. um which i which i, I don't blame them i shall say that the the t-shirt game has stepped up quite a bit like the cultural reset i like the t-shirts i have from the playoff games i've been to nah, i feel like i've were, gotten good ones no they were they were i got the fighting the basketball with the or the maple you, leaf with the arms would you ever wear them not either mowing the lawn or mowing the lawn. I live in Toronto. What lawn do you think I have? I'm here? just saying that's not a t-shirt. Mowing you're, the lawn. That's, that's not a t-shirt you're you're rocking. If, on if the you street catch me mowing pride. a lawn in Toronto, someone's like, "What the hell are you doing mowing my lawn?" <laughs> like that's it. I'm not paying you for that. I don't own a lawn mower. I don't owe, have a home with a lawn. I don't even the the building I live in doesn't even have a patch of grass anywhere like around it to even cut. I don't, I don't need a weed whacker. Like that's how little earth there is or grass there is around where i live stop acting like you live in the projects I, do you, do you have do you rock the playoff tee you have from 2015 or whatever no, but I, I have like honestly i have too many t-shirts i have too many t-shirts i gotta get rid of a couple t-shirts I, I i i swear i dump them in the i give so many to goodwill all the time but i i keep buying them i keep going i go through t-shirts like i'm a regular like maniac the point is the playoff tee now looks mm -hmm. like something you would buy in a store hmm that's good People should should get that. Although you know, always know with whatever the logo is on the. Did you get one? Did you no, steal I didn't a shirt? get one. I was working the game. I wasn't, I I wasn't there as a fan. Well, I, I don't know. I thought maybe the, you were referencing the shirt you're wearing tonight. That this was one that they threw because no, they it's weren't. A Raptor they shirt weren't that giving you out. Wear. No, they weren't. They would be very Canadian if they gave out denim shirts to the fans. But no, they didn't give out denim shirts. Before we go, tees. Before we go, just a couple of quick things. One is. You were talking about the front court and how guys have struggled all throughout the series. And that's very true. You thought that the Raptors would have more of an advantage in the front court when you look at this thing on paper. Because, yeah, Markeith Morris, Mike Scott, Jan Mahimni, Mahimni and uh, Marcin Gortat do not compare to what the Raptors have in the front court. And even early in the series when they were throwing Lucas Naguerre out there and he was giving them good minutes, you were thinking, yeah, you know what? This, this Raptors front court should be able to dominate in this series. 
while they haven't dominated and there hasn't been one night where all those guys have put it together, each and every night a different player has played well. And even in losses like game four, you had Jakob Pertl playing his best game and someone who was critical to them in crunch time and playing good defense. And I did think Pertl's, Pertl did have a, a halfway decent game. Like I didn't look at Pertl tonight and think that he, like he missed a couple of free throws, which were frustrating. And he had a couple of bunnies around the basket for some tap-ins and maybe could have done a little bit better job on the, the defensive glass. But they suck him into so many pick and roll actions where he's contesting things that that's really what makes it tough for the Raptors on the glass is that when you're you're asking your bigs to constantly come away from the basket because your guards can't fight through screens or stay in front of these guys uh yeah you get sucked away and you're you're asking smaller players especially when you go small to try to pick up rebounds from you and yeah you're not you're not really getting them so uh I thought Yak was decent and JV was massive for them tonight so they ended up getting their one big time front court player but I thought that it was interesting that Dwayne Casey went away from Siakam to go with Norm Powell. I don't see – I get. I don't even know why I was bothered predicting the rotations at this point. <laughs> but it's hard for me to imagine that the eight minutes we saw from Norm Powell are going to justify seeing him anymore because the, the most disheartening thing about watching him was I just didn't even think that – I thought there was a couple of loose balls that he could have gotten to that he didn't. He missed his one shot. He finished with a nice assist. He, he found – I think it was Pirtle or Siakam, one of the two of them – underneath the basket with a nice bounce pass but ultimately it just again nothing there from norm powell you're just you're not getting anything we've got some breaking news jd we have some Did you breaking hear anything I just said? news yes 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 a big goal has been scored not one but two first in his 100th appearance for the club josie altidore scores to give you one nothing the road goal but then tied at 1-1. But after a tough free kick, that's right. Who else but Seba with the goal? And it is now 2-1. Come on, you Reds. What do they got to win? 3-1 for it to not to go to penalty kicks? Yeah, right? I'm yeah, not, they I'm... win 3-1. Yeah, they won 3-1 and they don't go to penalties. That's correct. Yes. So there you go. Look at me with my soccer and my aggregate. Big you know, soccer guy over here. Hey, we're, we're, we're both good at uh, what, what, what do you know about the kicks and the headers and the parking the bus? Yeah. You know, what do you know <laughs> do about you, that? Do you really know what parking the bus yeah, means? Yeah, playing defense. Yeah, you just have a de defensive game where you try to hold the other Wait, hold, stop first. the phones before we get some more breaking news. We got two minutes. Some left. more breaking news. Oh, my goodness. In the National Hockey League, I am here to tell you that in a game seven, an original six team is going to the next round. It is final. Mm, that's good. Good for them, whoever that is. <laughs> Anyone tells me, I swear. I, I, <laughs> I want to tell you so out. bad. Lose I want to tell you so bad. Mind. I will freak out. Okay, wait. Here. No, I don't want to know anything else. That's actually it. Uh, thanks to everyone for the, the tweets to, to Donovan tonight. Thanks to everybody that's downloading this in uh, the podcast form on Free Association. Thanks to everybody that's watching on the YouTube page. Um, and again, you you leave the reviews on the podcast. You can leave your comments on the YouTube page. Although I, I made a pact to myself, probably in university, I wouldn't read YouTube comments. I think that if you're still <laughs> reading YouTube comments, you're on the hot seat. But uh, yeah, we really appreciate everyone that's doing that. And of course, most of all, we appreciate MasterCard because this show, Raptors Post Game, is presented by MasterCard. Proud fan of basketball in the North. Let's start something priceless. We'll see you Friday night. Yes, sir. After the game in Washington, where the Raptors are going to wrap things up.